today on Logan Lee Adventures. I venture further into Colombia and explore the ever vibrant cultural city of Medellin, which in recent years have gone through a renaissance itself to become a cosmopolitan hub of art, creativity, and expression in Colombia. Buenos dias in Medellin, Colombia. We have arrived, not by this very cool train, but you know, we're here, we're here in the city, we're walking around, we're exploring. First up, we're in El Centro, which is the central neighborhood. Uh, the kind of a businessy neighborhood as well, but there's a lot of delights in this neighborhood that we're gonna be exploring. And in this beautiful courtyard is this vintage trains. You know me, I have a thing for trains and architecture like this. So stick around and see what Medellin has to offer because we're gonna be exploring food, art, sights, everything but this beautiful city in Colombia. Now you gotta picture, this used to be the most dangerous square in Medellin, but Thanks to the democratization of architecture, this has become an open, lively square, square with LED lights. Hola. So it lights up at night. Hola! <laughs> <laughs> and here, like, this is now the headquarters of education. So it has completely been flipped over and then come this more modern and just lively open square. We're in this beautiful shopping street in Medellin. It's like lined up with trees all around. It's so lively here. I love it. So this area is called The Hole because you can literally get anything for everything. It's so lively with all the street markets and vendors here. You can try everything. We just entered into the building that used to be the Palace of Justice for 60 years and now this is like some huge mega mall. Well, market basically. But the inner architecture is stunning. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're so like, curious. I yeah. <laughs> curious. Yeah, it looks yeah, 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 yeah. very organic green. <laughs> <laughs> Nuclear. Downtown Medellin, aka La Candelaria, is so often overlooked, but as you can see, it's safe to wander around during the day and just like any other big city around the world, you just gotta be vigilant. Other than that, Plaza Botero is such a cool public space in the city's old quarter, with these sculptures everywhere by one of Latin America's most celebrated artists. This is actually my first time ever seeing a Botero in real life, and the Colombian artist is best known for these voluptuous figures and of course like really cute chunky horses. He donated all these sculptures to the city since he was also born in Medellin. Also, the Palace of Cultural Rafael Urbi, as you can see from this gothic revival facade, is just so stunning. Apparently, inside there's a museum, art gallery, and a cafe. So, on this corner already, you can see that there's such a great bite into the cultural and art scene of Medellin. 
This square along with the art lends to that democratization of architecture that we talked about. And this is the metro line of Medellin that everyone is so proud of in the city for good reason because it's stunning and it connects the city so well. Before coming to Medellin, I must admit that I didn't really know much about the city. But as I took my time exploring it, I started to really become enamored by Medellin more and more. Just surrounded by mountains, I learned that this unique geographical location of the city is why Medellin is also called the city of eternal spring sounds so romantic and poetic unlike other latin american countries that are really hot and humid this city in particular has a constant cool breeze from the lovely climate sheltered in the nook of these mountains but it's also a city of street art bustling commerce specializing in exporting colorful cut of flowers and textile manufacturing right here in medellin now we are going to be taking the metro. Cannot wait. This is the pinnacle of just, it symbolizes so much from the locals in Medellin between, sorry, just going up the escalator, between hope and just the progression of this city, especially back in the 80s when the metro line was starting to be developed and just seeing how it connects this whole city now and how proud the locals are of it because I mean, this is huge, huge progress for the city. And that was our first subway metro experience in Medellin. Incredible views. You get the whole city, you get views of the mountains, of the apartments all around of like different landmarks too highly recommend to do that because now it get us to the different neighborhoods that we want okay we're in this neighborhood right now which is called la urela so la urelas can't get any more colombian vibe than this Alright, we are kicking lunch off with this meal at restaurant La Margarita in the neighborhood. And this is a classic meal for lunch. I mean, you can have it for dinner, but it's quite big and heavy. So for lunch in Medellin and the area. So this is called Mandeo. Yes. What's it called? Mandeo Paisa. Paisa. Mandeo Paisa. And what? Bandejo is like a oh. Paisa. And Bandejo Paisa. Paisa is basically the name of the tribe of the people for a lot of people who live in Medellin. And since this heavy meal is basically, it comes from, you know, like a lot of working, a working class, a lot of workers, you know, you need to fill up their stomach on lunch and you can get it here. You get a little bit of you get a little bit of everything. You get an egg, avocado, little salad, rice, beef as well. And it is delicious. Look at this part and how crispy the skin is. Mmm. Oh yeah, that crunch. That's good. We are the Yam Q de Quente, which is this open kitchen concept Colombian barbecue restaurant. And I am so excited. Me and Yurun order a bunch of meat that they're gonna grill up right now. But it's basically on the same street, uh, La, La 70. Please, if I'm butchering it, I apologize in advance. But this street is lit. As you can see, the sun has went down and people are out and about. This is like one of the most vibrant Colombian neighborhoods in Medellin. And it is just such a different feeling from any other neighborhoods, especially when you're here from the day to now sundown to dinner. And then all these clubs and bars are opening up all along the street as well. And of course, we're sitting out on this beautiful patio, about to dive in to solve 
good, good meat. This coconut, cane pineapple, smoothie, cheers. Look at this. It's all the size of my head, basically. I love it. And for ribs, they just know. Look at this. I can eat with plastic gloves on so then my hands won't get so dirty. I mean, why can't Western North America, Europe get with this program? Now I can pick out. Welcome to Medellin's Comuna 13 neighborhood. Here, outdoor escalators and art have helped change what was once a notoriously dangerous part of Medellin. Walking these streets now, I really wouldn't have been able to do that back in the 80s, the 90s, up to, well, even the mid 2000s, when this neighborhood right here, Comuna 13, was considered one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in the entire world. This is one of the biggest highlights of Medellin for me is the art and the art specifically in Comuna 13 which is Commune 13 one of the thir 13 out of the 16 uh, neighborhoods com communes that are in Medellin and how it tells a story of transformation especially the story of Medellin itself from the neighborhood in the mountains we're entering it now and we'll be exploring all the graffiti and the mural that makes up the transformation. All right here. And now we're gonna enter down this lane filled with murals. And as a storyline, it starts with a timeline from the past going to the present and the future of Medellin. It was run by a violent drug trafficking organization who used the poor, sprawling hillsides barrio as a transit route in and out of the city and serve as a stronghold for guerrillas, gangs, and paramilitaries. But things really began to change for this neighborhood in the early 2000s when then president, president Alvaro Uruwe, launched Operation Orion, a raid on Comuna Treces spearheaded by three thousand troops backed by helicopters like whirling all over this barrio so this neighborhood with this 100,000 residents were caught in the crossfire which really resulted in tragedy and arbitrary detentions disappearance and hundreds of injuries but during the following decades in the 2000s, the government set about improving the hillside commune, redeveloping the brick houses that you see now and building community centers. But access still remains a problem here. So in 2011, the government installed Escaleras Electricas. We're gonna go up these escalators all the way up the neighborhood, which is so cool. So these escalators gave residents here newfound freedom and brought about a total shift in the local mentality. And then you started to see things like kids began to play in the streets once again. And then local artists felt safe enough to come out and brighten up the neighborhood. And the result, well, this is all the street art that we're seeing now from just the creation of the most colorful communes in Medellin. And this area, like just surrounding as we can see now, is covered with murals and graffiti and bright colors and street arts decorating walls up and down. And it's unbelievable to think that this is literally was once riddled with bullet holes. I love this and live music and break dance on the streets too. It's just so cool here. Many murals here just tells the story of Comuna Traces, uh, just depicting local heroes. So it's really 
really touching to be exploring community traces today, knowing the history and learning about the history that is just so recent with many tragedies that has happened to pave the way. And now community traces is much safer. But during the day for someone like me who, you know, I'm just here for a short time. I'm a traveler. I don't know much about the culture and still learning. Uh, but otherwise, it is very much so a neighborhood still in motion, in growth, and has come a long way in its renaissance. <laughs> This is within the walls of the labyrinth itself. Just see how tight the alleys are. Cremas Donos Alba, right here in Comuna Tresa, has one of the best homemade ice cream ever. So this is homemade avocado. It's so tasty. Like, I love it. It literally just tastes like, like pure avocado ice cream. So what's the difference between a mural and graffiti? Uh, well, mural usually tells a story and it also depends on the type of paint they use. Well, murals usually are made from paint, uh, whereas graffiti is leaving your mark somewhere and is usually by spray. But both are intertwined and both are art in this neighborhood. Here we go. metro system which is so cool so the whole metro system connects and links up with them with the cable cars too so you don't even have to pay separately to experience this cool freaking ride look at this oh my gosh we're flying well it feels like i'm flying over medellin above the rooftops so cool. Okay, I'm gonna stand up and show you the show you the views. Show you the views. Look at all these mountains around us. All these buildings. Wow. Okay, this is so cool. So I went from San Javier Station. I'm gonna, gonna do the loop, and the whole loop to go all the way up, but all the way down is like half an hour one way. Uh, but you don't have to go, like there's stations in between, there's like multiple stations so you can stop by in different stations and look out down below What? This is so sick Like how is this part of a metro station? I can see why the locals are so proud of their metro system Like I think this is like one of the best metro systems in the world You can quote me on that too Wow So sick Now you may be wondering, how come all these houses here are like exposed brick? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Up alongside the mountains? Well, simple enough, you get a tax break, you pay a little bit less on your taxes if your house is incomplete. So how they know that your house is considered complete is if you paint the walls. So if you leave the wall unpainted, then your house is incomplete as it is not finished being built yet, so you pay less on your taxes. So, ooh, okay, now we're rolling up to this first station here. Incredible views from the metro station itself. Look at this. 
So hopefully I can explain some of the history to you well enough from what I understand. So as you can see, Medellin is made up of multiple, multiple mountains. And basically back then there was a rumor created by the Pope, well not created by the Pope, but rumor of the Pope said, the Catholic Pope said that whoever moves to Medellin, out in these mountains you can just create, like you can just have your own piece of land for free, for free. And having land and owning a house is huge, huge part of Colombia. So people moved out here, especially people who got displaced by poverty, violence, moved out here and then created a plot of land. So what they did was it got built up on the side of the mountains. However, that wasn't actually true. The rumor wasn't actually true. Except, you know, now that the people are here, the people are built, they're building these houses out of whatever pieces that they can find, whether it's from the streets or like any brick pieces. And then eventually, this is what you got. And then years later, like we're talking decades, decades later, the government tried to officialize all this, but it was really hard as well. It was possible, but really hard to show that you own this, place, like these different houses, because you need a few documents. You need to document that you were displaced by war, by violence, by poverty. You also need a document to show that you were, or like your your family uh, were the ones who like lived here for at least 15 years. And also that back, back, back then, that you also, or your family also uh, built these houses or built the house that you're in. So pretty, pretty cool history as part of the city. And then now having the metro system being connected to these parts of the city, like to this side, the mountain side of the city, along with the cable car is just incredible. You know, like I love public transit so much and coming from, you know, like growing up in Toronto where I just don't feel like the public transit really serves the people as effective. Just being able to see the mass transit system being readily, just being so well connected all around the world and then here in Medellin as well is just makes me so happy. Makes me so happy. Ah! My Medellin adventures continue in the next vlog, but for now subscribe if you haven't already, give this vlog a thumbs up, leave a comment below, and click next for more.